from now. Can you hear me now? Okay, so it works, yeah? Hi guys, anyone who's in here? So, um, the aim of today is to have a look at some slices and um, have a look at splitting some of the files. Making sure we all know how to do so. Um, we use loads of different slices here um, with all the different machines we have. So, um, we've got some tips and tricks on different, different slices. So, it might benefit you, it might not. You might already know. We'll give it a go. Some people are overcoming. Hi guys. Yeah, it's cold here, Rick. Not in here, though. I'm warm. Okay. No. No, this is stream. Just a little bit delayed, I think. Probably. I'm just trying to keep my hair under control there, to be honest. Probably more the water stuff. I don't have a haircut in a while. My bad. Max has done a nice um, video, which I'll show as well, on um, using some other techniques to uh, make make your color files, so I'll be playing that as well just after we go through some bits. Hi Jack. Brownie. Hi Jack. Really all good mate. Does it work? You at home? Cool. So we use um, loads of slices. Um, particularly, what we're going to look at today is Craftware. Pretty gents, idea maker, and simplified 3D. And how we can use them to do some stuff like you can see here. So, what I've started with. Simplify 3D. 
got quite a cool feature and what I've sort of done this around is a, a logo which we have which you can see is sort of present on the other screen let me just get the file up So Simplify 3D at the top here as an add-in um, convert image to 3D. So you can't see the bit I'm doing now because I'm browsing to create some files, but I'm selecting a JPEG uh, from my from my desktop, and I'm just creating it in with the auto-generated settings. It gives you a place to save it, just as you import it. So what we've done is we've made a logo stamp from the picture. So we can do the simple for 3D. We can change the depth. We can change everything inside that when we generate it. But this is just an auto-generated one, which we'll be doing today. So because we've got that file, and because we've just made that file, we can then take that into any slicer we sort of need to. What we're doing is take it into again. Absolutely. Cool. So, we're going to take that logo we just did. We're going to drag it here. So, with Idea Maker, some of the features we use with Idea Maker for are the free cutting features. I'll just go through, show you how I do that. So, at the top, we've got free cut. We can change this angle here. Yeah. We'll drag it over. Obviously, as part of our logo, sort of uh, slice this into a dual color print. It looks suitable with our logo. Now, make my cut here. A section of that part in our logo. So we got two parts. Oh, moved it. You don't want to move anything. So we've cut that. It's two parts. So go into the pre cut. We'll put it in the part. Go in this part. Select each individual part to cut. So we're going to put some depth in this right in here. We just want a little bit of colour on that backdrop to make it stand out. So now we've got three different parts. Why I just did that. So you select the depth in this model, it's got a nice um, logo down there which I can highlight. It's not like that on uh, every logo that you do, but you can change the depth and you can do all that in Simplify 3D. You can give yourself some, some depth there. Okay, so now we've got our three parts. We're going to export them. Again, it's file. Uh, you might not see this on the screen here, um, but it's file export model. So we have to select the model we want to export. So 
say we move in the same location. So, so in what you can't see there is I'm not sure why it doesn't let me do that. Maybe I'll find out soon. If I go into file, um, export models, you can export models into a desktop or wherever you want to do documents, and that can tell me off the using my desktop. Um, once we've done so, um, because we didn't move them after we've cut them, when we export them, we're going to be exporting them into the same location. Um, on a build bed is what they were when we cut them. So if we move these into Craftware now, our three files that we just made, which I'll get used to it soon. Yeah. We grab the three files that we made and click on all of them together. So we drag them in as, as uh, you know, we hold control, we click on the files, we drag them in. So this has already done some, it's already done a little bit for us already because when we drag in multiple objects into the graph where it will assign them a head, so we can obviously go to the top and select what we want. Yeah. Okay. So, cutting files and taking them apart um, and mixing them together. Um, if you try and sort of stitch two files uh, or merge them, like this, and you slice it and it looks okay, the chances are it won't be. Um, and the head will sort of uh, repeat itself over the same same part twice and cause some, cause some grief. So if you're cutting the files up then it's quite useful to, uh, to, to, to keep them in the same place when you're exporting them from Idea Maker or another program if, if, if it does it and you know how to do that, then um, it's quite handy to do that. Um, but we can cut. We could have cut this into as many uh, as many pieces as we want. So we could have had a different uh, shade as we have done on the 3D. There, we could have had that on the J Supplied logo. The J Supplied logo could have been deeper. So that would give us um, a few more options that we sort of didn't use. Um, Okay, so I sort of, I mean, you can do that with on angles, various angles, um, which is really handy um, into an object. Um, you can remerge the files in in Idea Maker as well. So if you want to merge them, you can. Um, but yeah, that's re really quite handy. Um, just a way, uh, another way of cutting some files, which we We've seen quite a few people were uh, interested in. So if I go on to this is called 3D Gents, a manufacturer of 3D printers, and this slicing software works with their machines. However, it's free. Um, you can download it. Um, you can import things into this program and export them. So, and you can export them, which is um, really handy. Um, and what you can do in here um, is what you really can't do in in other slices. Things have changed. Yeah, like um. Power, yeah, it's, it, it looks sort of bubbles and overlaps and rocks the hot ends. And actually, on the flow, um, on the flow printer, if, if you do it um, too much, it will just destroy the uh, the PCB because it's just vibrating as it goes over itself quite a lot, which is um, something to be avoided. But 
Um, so yeah, like what we've done here, should have probably not done this to explain what I'm doing here. Um, so 3 Gents has a really handy way of splitting items. Um, I haven't seen this on any other slicing software. So grab it. Um, it's a really good program to import and export models from. And it can do um, splitting in ways which are really good. And it really can be really handy if we're making multiple items and we want them to fit together nicely and not have to glue flat surfaces together or spend ages designing um, uh, the way around the file. Mac, Macs are and uh, sort of head designer really uh, enjoys this cutting technique. So if we go into split, um, so we can split the model in various axes, which we need to do, and we can split, and that's fine, and it will just give us a flat surface, which we can glue together. If we go into advanced, I'm clicking on the stream. Right, that's better. Um, so we can change all sorts of options here, which is really, really handy. Um, offsets, depths, angles, edges. Really good. So just to give you an example of this, if I just split money. And what we've done is we split the model, so we haven't moved the item yet, so we won't even know it's there. But we've given it interlocking features on the inside. So if I do this, what we've done here is we've given it some really good interlocking parts, which if you're building something of size, um, to just drop a file into a slicing program and be for it to be able to do that is um, really handy for me. I hope it's really handy for you. Um, not everything that we want to print can fit on our build beds, even though that we can do up to like a one meter size. Um, still very handy to have. Once you know it's there, it's, um, it's a really good feature to have. Um, but of course, going into it a little bit further, you can change the angles. Um, yeah, so we're at 75 degrees there. Uh, that would need support. But, you know, let's change it so it doesn't need support. Um, so, it's, so it's got some really good features in which you can take advantage of when you're connecting models. Thought you'd like that, Neil. Right. I've got a. Uh, I hope that answered some questions. And if you need to know any more, just let me know. But um, I've got a video here that Max has done um, for using some other some other features and some other ways of uh, in some more advanced ways. Let me just grab this uh, video. Let me know if it doesn't work. So I'm going to quickly show you how to split up models for dual colour printing on Mesh Mixer by Autodesk, which is a free bit of software, which is extremely powerful and useful for stuff like this. So I import their bunny, which is a base model. Um, it's broken at the bottom, so before I show you how to split it up, I'll just get rid of that like that and close the mesh. So the way to do it is to take the select tool, which gives you a brush. Um, you've got different types of brushes here. I just use the default one, and you select the parts that you want to split from the model. So I'll quickly split up the head on this. So you can be quite um, rough with how you do it, because there's another trick I'll show you to make it much, much smoother, which funnily enough is called smooth boundary. Right, so, and it will 
create a nice smooth line and divide view. So you can just accept that. And then the orange bit is the part that you've selected. So what you do is you go to modify and create face group. And now as far as the um, software is concerned, these are two separate surfaces. So what you then do is go to edit and generate complex and it recognizes these two separate parts. And what you do is you double click on the boundary and you'll see like a little gray bit appear there which is where it's closed the mesh or added an extra wall in it. So you accept that. You've then got a complex mod so you can delete the old one if you want and you're just left with this one. Then you use edit again, I'm going to select it, edit and then split complex. And what it's done there is it's divided these into two separate bits. So again, we can delete the old one because we don't need it. And we've got the head and the body. So what you then do is select one, export it to wherever. So I've done this before already, so I'll just replace that. And then we can go into Craftware, find these two files. Should be in here and here. Scale it up. And then with Mike's really good dual color profile that I've got, I can slice that and it'll do it in two parts. Then I allocate each one to the head. And there you go, it's got all the white charts and everything just from the profile we've got. You see it stitches it really, really nicely because it's divided it exactly where you want it to. So there you go. Damn it. Thanks, Vincent. I, that's a really bad thing for me to do. Thanks, mate. Um, so, yeah, no, it's been really enjoyable um, doing this. If you need any more sort of videos along these lines, then let us know. I think we're going to do some, um, some slicing videos and how we, uh, how we go about making the profile. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I think we're going to do some more videos along these lines. Um, and how we actually get to the profiles that we make, which we put on the group. And um, we're great for other people to do it for other filaments. Um, we we typically do the profiles for the filaments that we use in house. So if you need any of those, please let us know. Um, I think one of the sales guys may may put his email below if we need to get any bulk orders or, or things like that. Um, yeah, Rick, I think they they're on they're on YouTube. I quite new to this. I think they're on YouTube as well, as well as this right now. Um, so you can watch it back. Um, yeah, and let me know what you want to know, and we'll, we'll we'll go through some more. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Um...